guys, welcome back, it's Auburn I here, your Tekken Games Crusader, and we have some unboxings to do today to compare with these phone coolers. This one is a grip cooler, similar to the Aikaito, or Aikaichio, but this one has a built-in 4000 milliamp battery. This one is just a fan with a semiconductive pad cooler that is telescopic that expands outwards. It does have RGB control in it though. This is the GameSir F8 Pro Snow Gone. I was recommended this one a while back and then in comments someone asked me if I knew anything about it so I went ahead and looked on Amazon found it we're going to take a look at it so as you can see this one is designed with a pad for a capacitive use of a uh, analog type of control on touch screen which i don't care for those i would rather just use a controller with a grip to hold the phone but uh Sometimes there are some games that can be used for those type of things. You can go here, follow, you can go here and go to the website. You can get the app for this device to be able to control your stuff with the cooling. Give me one moment, guys. Okay, we're back, guys. Sorry about that. So, as we're continuing on here, you can see it does have a, a decent sized grip to it. In the description, semiconductive refrigeration cool down in one second. <clears throat> so comparing the size and the shape, you know, this is probably the largest pad I've seen yet for one fan use. These others are a little bit different, and we'll get to them in a bit. Exclusively designed joystick, maximize custom control. Low noise operation as low as 30 or 32 decibels. Two in one solution as a hand grip and a phone holder. Ergonomic hand grip for cozy handheld feeling. So, looks like. No information on um, charging ability or anything like that because there's no battery inside, but we still don't even know about pass-through either, so. Let's go ahead and take a look, see what we got. all she got. So we have the not a clamshell but a combined grip or a combined taped Here's the device. Here is a charge power cable. Not a charge cable for this device, but a power cable for it. Then, of course, with GameServe, we always have a little mini catalog. So that's not really even that. Some stickers. They are metallic to have a reflection. And then our user manual. <clears throat> Package contents. Check, check. 
check, check, check. Okay, so we have some letters here. We got left handle, right handle, power switch is G right there. Type C charging port is I right there. Joystick B. Holder is E. Mounting slot for joystick, H. So it's good that that's removable. Cooling zone, which is right there. And indicator light, which is right there. Instructions adjust the vertical height of the joystick in the mounting slot. According to player's own control habits, it can also be turned up or pulled out if not necessary. Stretch the left and right grip and install the phone on the F8 Pro. Ensure the control zone or cooling zone fits closely to the back of the phone. Plug the Type C end of the power cable to the F8 Pro charging port, Type C interface, and the USB A end to the power adapter not included. Kindly reminder, joystick may not work properly when using a thick screen protector. The amount of joystick movement, one side is 3 millimeters. It is not recommended to use it when the game needs a larger movement. <clears throat> Turn the power switch to on to start F8 Pro. The power indicator and RGB Backlight also light up at the same time. <clears throat> now you're welcome to freely play games on the tangibly icy phone. If necessary, the metal holder hidden on the back can be unfolded as the phone holder on the desk. So that metal back part is a prop so you can prop it up mount it on the desk don't need that so let's see how far it actually expands as it is it's 120 millimeters expands to 176 millimeters it does have openings on each side so for your phone you can be able to we'll make use of the razor phone 2 here just to show it does fit with a little bit of space left so it may actually fit uh, larger phones up to 6.8 inches screen diameter depending on how the phone is designed and if it is an ultra wide resolution or an, a plus resolution so I can tell you with this phone in here this thing is super super heavy and it's top heavy because I didn't center it down. That's why. I mean, you can put it wherever you need it, but remember, you want your cooling zone to be centered. So, that's centered on the cooling zone. It's still top heavy on this. So, you want balance, and this is not going to balance. It's also a very small grip, as you can see. I personally like the grip on this one a lot better, just because it's a longer grip. And where it has a battery in it, it gives you that extra little ability to not only 
cool, but also charge your device. Whereas this is just, to get this to balance, I would almost have to pull it down to here, and you see how much of the pad is not having coverage. So that's not a great start. But if we're using it as intended, that's even with the indentions. Let's go ahead and check and see. It also makes sense why they give you a, a kickstand on it, too. Let's check and see what we have for uh, cooling capabilities on this. I'm just going to plug it in right here. So let's go ahead, flip our power switch. Let's see how long it takes to get condensation. I don't yet have my thermal camera, so I can't do much on that. But here, take a look at the pretty lights change while we're waiting. While this is going, we'll go ahead and take a look at this one. So this is the Jewberry Phone Cooler. It is a dual 60 millimeter fan. The interesting thing on this is though, let's say you want to be able to you know, use it like I, I got this to try and use in my car. Just to measure the amount of actual cooling area. This one is slightly larger than here. But this is a straight up um, metal where this is a silicon pad cover. But I got this because my phone in my car, as soon as it gets in the sunlight, it just it immediately says, you know, emergency exclamation point battery well I have a, a phone mount in my car that uses a quarter inch so you'll be able to screw this in here and then take this part off put this on in my car in place of the one that's there. Mount my phone. Screw this back down. USB type C with pass through for USB type A. So what can you do with that? Well, the big thing you can do with that, wow, that's a decently long cable. That's about a meter. Maybe at 1.5 meters. You can be able to plug in from the top to plug into your phone and then have the bottom plugged in be able to power the cooler which I'm going to power on my PC top USB right now so cool thing about this you have actual control on this one holy crap 
As soon as I turn that on, that is ice cold already. Let's see where this one's at. I mean, it's starting to get some condensation. It is cold. I'll give it that. It is cold. But this has got a lot of heat on the sides because it is semiconductive. So there is an electrical circuit that's cooling this down. But wow, that is already cold. Like cold, cold. Let's see what it's on. Okay, so that is the, uh, this controls the lower you go, the colder it gets. Wow, that is already producing condensation after a few seconds. This may actually be the best phone cooler that I have tested so far. There is no control over the RGB fans, but you do have control over what it does and how well it does it. So that's pretty cool. So you can take it all the way up to 40. And the fans stop based on how cool it is. So right now, it's heating up. It's actually raising the temperature. And it's going off of the temperature of my fingers right now for the heat transfer. So this is actually a temperature gauge. That's what that is. Wow, that got warm really fast. I'm lowering it back down now just to see. That should kick those fans on. Oh yeah. Wow. So it's going to try and cool down the temperature of my fingers right now. It says 16C. So this thing just does not have a good fan thermal design on it. Around the sides is okay, but where this is flat on the back, if you lay that down, you're not getting this thing cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at our last one here. This is a different design altogether. This is a magnetic foam flat radiator by YKZ. The company is Shenzhen Tongyulao Precision Electronics. I can't tell because the print is kind of smeared. But this is uh, this is designed for those phones that have cases that you can be able to wirelessly charge through. So this one has wireless charging built in. Which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. So it may not have a battery like this. It may not have cool LEDs and stuff like these. But Whoops. What it does have is something I'm going to see about modding this onto the front of my Quest. Because it has a magnetic attachment ring that you put on your phone. Oh, wow. That's really solid. The good thing about that design means that, you know, let's say you have buttons on your phone and you don't want those to get pressed by applying a clamp on the top and the bottom of your phone. Well, 
you do have this kind of a design, which does to the sides, left and right. Or, what you can do is if you have a thin foam case that permits wireless charging, or no case at all, you can be able to apply this metal ring on the back of the phone. This is a silicon pad that goes over this so it doesn't scratch anything. But yeah, you apply this on the back of your phone. It's mounted. Once it's mounted, you know, I was thinking the front of the Quest gets pretty warm. So if I take this and use the uh, accessory port on my VR power, this one right here, the one amp, to power this, where's power on that? There it is. So if I power this off of that, wonder if it'll help cool down the Quest. Because there are some games I'm testing that really heat up the Quest. And I'm guessing whenever it comes out, Resident Evil 4 VR from Armature Studios is definitely going to heat up the Quest 2. So, let's go ahead, plug this one into the computer as well. See what we get on this one. Okay, it does have LED lights. Well, that's cool. Oh, wow. So, just like this one, this thing is already freaking cold. That is awesome. You can see pure, straight frost on this thing. So let's uh, go down the uh, the pricing on these. This is forty. This is twenty three. This was twenty two. I think for the price, these and the features offered for just generally a cooler and not a grip. These are really well priced. This one is. It's about the typical game server pricing of their devices. They always have a markup on everything, especially if they add LEDs to it. I mean, this is cool. But like I said, I'm, I'm not a fan of a small, small grip. You can see the size of my hands. This is about half of my palm. But, as it is, for someone general purpose use, you can be able to plug your phone in still through the side, have your phone in here, have it cooling down, enjoy game while you're letting people wonder, wow, that's cool looking. You got LEDs on a back of your phone. I mean, it is a conversation starter. That's for sure. But, I am still, for the purpose of grip and design, partial to this. I just wish it would update to a design that has a USB Type-C and maybe an extra port for pass-through so you can charge this while this charges your phone and this be able to go a little bit taller and maybe like a dual fan version of it because this is a very very nice device especially for $26 to get a 4000 milliamp battery included in with this semiconductive controller grip this thing is always sold on sold out on Amazon as well now. 
Ever since I got it, it's been sold out. But, you know, as I said, this one, I have an extra. So, I'm going to see about using one on phones and one on my Quest 2. And I'm not talking about on my Quest 2 in front of the look mod. I'm talking about in the front of the actual headset. So... Look mod. It's got its own battery. It's about seven hours of length. Just felt like doing something cool that took me less than 30 minutes to do. So. I do need to charge it again, though. Because it's been a few days and I've been running it every single time I did content for the... Uh, Oculus Quest 2. So, if I really, really, really want to, I can take this off. It's that metal circle. The hot spot on the Quest 2 is slightly off center. It's like right here. So what I'll do is grab this silicon pad here, go ahead and apply it to the back. Wow, that is really cool. Sorry I jumped in on this one guys, I didn't even bother going through the manual for it or anything. See the edge. I just can't grip the edge. My fingernails. So I guess I could do it like that. Yeah, we'll just do it like that. So, all I'd have to do is turn this up this way, run the cable back to here, plug it in, bingo bango, cool down the quest. Or if you wanted to, literally, you could use two of these and do them like eyeballs, you know, scoot it over to where you can put one here, one here. But this is the hot spot for the Quest 2. This is the hottest point on the front of the headset. The other point you could put it would be right here. Because this is the other uh, area of hot spot. But you'll then block the seam around here where it vents out. But if you look, the vents aren't all the way across. It's seamed to where you can see right there is a vent. Right there's a short vent. Right in the center is a vent. Right there. Right there. And right there. I mean, the way it looks, you would think that, oh, it's just all a vent all the way around. But they couldn't do that, otherwise this wouldn't stay on. So, yeah, that's... uh. A little bit of information here. Here it is being shown applied to an Apple iPhone 12. You know, you just, wherever the hottest point is on your phone, that's where you would put it. I do wish the adhesive was a little bit stronger and the magnetic force was a little bit stronger, but where there is memory and storage capacities inside of the phones I can understand why you know as it says here that's not something you really want to mess with with electronics especially you know precious data 
people's pictures and stuff like that. Don't want to lose it. But yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below in the video. And I'll have links to all these products shown and featured in this video in the description as well. You have uh, any desire to want to know more about me or know whenever I have new things come in that may be potential future content, follow me on Twitter at Zybernight. And you know, feel free to give the video, if you enjoyed the content, a thumbs up or consider subscribing to the channel to know whenever I have new videos going live and what it may be about. I can already tell you, the next video I'm doing is about some cases for the Oculus Quest 2. Just waiting on the last case to come in, which is the Bobo VR C2 large case. But guys, this is Zyber Knight, your Tekken Games Crusader. Hope you guys have a good night, good day, take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.